it's not fair. I mean, left after all, let's, let's just cut to the chase. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. Let's just name it for what it is. It's not fair. That's the normal reaction that you and I have every single time we hear this gospel passage proclaimed. It just isn't fair. If you and I had a quarter for every time that somebody has said that to you and I, it's not fair. Or if we had a quarter every time that you and I said to somebody else, it's not fair, I'm guessing we would all financially be well secured. Would we not? Sure we would. It's not fair. It's something I heard my older siblings say over and over and over again to my parents with regards to us younger siblings. After all, we got to do things they didn't get to do. We got to participate in more sports activities than my older siblings got to do. We got to be able to do this that they weren't able to do. And so my older siblings would constantly remind my mother and dad and us younger siblings the fact that it's not fair. To which I would always reply, yeah, you want to talk about what's not fair. Let me tell you this. Well, when you older siblings were born and came into the world, mom and dad with the first couple of kids were very concerned about doing everything right and making sure that the kids were well taken care of. And so when your bottle fell out of your mouth or your pacifier, why they would pick it up and they would sterilize it under hot water and all that kind of stuff. And with us younger kids, why if our pacifier fell out and it fell on the ground and got dirt on it, they would wipe it off on their pants. They would suck on it once and stick it in our mouths. You want to talk about fairness, let's go at it, huh? It's not fair. The comparativeness in all of us continues to be rampant, and it's what is at the very heart of today's gospel. People complaining. Actually, as Matthew tells us, they're grumbling. Grumbling, those, those initial people that were hired early in the morning who put in the full day's burden and heat of working in the vineyard? Why? When you and I respond to the fact that it's not fair to today's parable, basically what we're doing, is it not true, is that we are associating ourselves with which group? The ones who were hired first. But now think about it more for a moment. Think about if you and I were the ones that were hired at five o'clock and only put in an hour's labor, what would our response be? Would it be, it's not fair? So maybe as we think about, reflect upon today's parable, maybe we should try to put ourselves in the shoes and in the life of the five o'clock workers. But actually, we don't need to go there either because I'm guessing the five o'clock workers would have their reason for saying it's not fair as well, especially when they heard, of course, those who were hired early in the morning or at noon or at three o'clock grumbling against them. And so the it's not fairness is going back and forth. Actually, today's parable wants you and I to reflect not on those who are hired early in the morning. We're not to reflect on those hired at noon. We're not to reflect those hired at three o'clock, nor should we be concerned about those hired at five. What God wants us to reflect on through the gift of Jesus Christ is the landowner. The landowner is obsessed. Did you get it? Did you catch it? What is he obsessed about? He's obsessed about the fact that people are standing around idle in the marketplace. And he will do whatever it takes to get people to stop standing around. So he goes early in the morning, and he goes again at noon, and he goes again at 3 o'clock, and he goes again at 5 o'clock. Why? Because he doesn't want people to be idle. The landowner wants everyone to be workers, to be workers in the vineyard. 
And there, my friends, is the key to the parable. It's the key, more importantly, to our lives, to our purpose, to our meaning, to the reason why God has chosen to place you and I here at this moment and this time in this place in history. It's because God desires and needs workers in the vineyard. And those people are you and I. And we have to stop standing idly by. We have to stop standing idly by grumbling about the fact of the political state of our country today. We have to stop standing by simply grumbling about the fact that there's injustice. We have to stop standing by in the marketplace grumbling about the fact that this person is getting more than this person and this good person is getting what they shouldn't be getting and et cetera, et cetera, because of course that's what we do, huh? We stand around and we grumble and we're in the marketplace being idle. So Jesus says to you and I, as he did to all those in the parable, you too come into my vineyard. You too put in that work, whether it's an hour, whether it's four hours, whether it's six hours, whether it's a full day's work, and I will give you the usual daily wage, which once we start working in the vineyard, all of a sudden we start realizing that, of course, this vineyard is not like any other vineyard. This is the vineyard called the kingdom of heaven, and this kingdom of heaven is not like what we experience normally on earth, and so therefore we're no longer worrying about comparing and worrying about what it is that we are getting or not getting. Because once our focus is on the landowner and the kingdom of heaven that we are working in, why then all of a sudden it's no longer worrying, we're no longer worrying about comparing ourselves to others. We're no longer worrying about what it is we are getting, but rather our focus now is what we are able to do, what we are able to give, more importantly, who are, we are able to be. God's beloved sons and daughters invited into this sacred place, into this holy ground that needs to be tilled, that needs to be fertilized, that needs our hands, and it needs our sweat, and it needs our attention, and it needs our time. And this vineyard cannot grow, it cannot flourish, it cannot produce abundant fruit unless you and I choose to cooperate with the landowner. And you and I respond to the invitation to come into the vineyard. And once we get there, why we take on the very spirit of the landowner himself, who is generous beyond our imagining. So no longer do I worry about whether it's fair or not. No longer am I concerned about comparing myself and what I'm getting compared to the other person and what they're getting. But all of a sudden now, now that I'm in this vineyard called the kingdom of heaven, which is about peace and justice and compassion and reconciliation and love and reaching out to those in need, once I enter into that kingdom and start and help participate in that work, why then all of a sudden I begin to discover that whatever it is that I need, God supplies it in abundance. And he gives to me what it is that I need so that I can keep doing the work that needs to be done, just like God gives to you the, what you need to keep doing the work that you need to do, who you need to be, a fellow worker in his vineyard. So let us say yes when the landowner invites us to come into his vineyard too. Let us not worry about what time of the day it is, let us not be concerned about what it is that we might be getting because the landowner can only give us what it is that the landowner has. And that, my friends, is everything.